Delta. I'm going to press A to D, select. I'm going to hold the minimum mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hover here, hold Shift, then press B to draw a zoom box right here. I'm on face select. I'm going to press C for paint select. I'm going to select right here. I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. Press X to bring up our delete menu, then choose faces to delete. By the way, if, uh, if you're like, wow, he's going fast, YouTube has a way to slow down the video, yet still hear the video. So uh, we still have some ways to go. I would like to get through texturing and all kinds of cool stuff. However, this tutorial is already, I'm assuming, fairly long. So uh, mm, trying to get through it. So I'm going to press uh, A to deselect. I'm going to hold shift the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to click here to go to vertices select. I'm going to click here. Pull this down like this. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, we're going to use this object to add some extra detail in. So I'm going to uh, zoom out. I'm going to hover here, press L. I'm going to hold Shift, then press D to duplicate. And I want uh, it right here. So one way that actually I think helps to get things around fairly quickly is I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to click here. I'm going to hold shift. And then while holding shift, press S. This brings up our snap to menu. I'm then going to choose cursor to selected. So our cursor is right there on that face that I had selected, right? I'm going to press A to D select. I'm going to hover here, press L. And then with this select, I'm going to hold shift, press S. Our snap menu uh, pops up again. I'm then going to choose selection to cursor offset. So this kind of like gives me uh, you know, puts the object right where I wanted that. So I'm going to press S to scale. I'm going to hold control on the middle mouse button to zoom in. I'm going to press R to rotate on the X axis. Press S to scale. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to press R to rotate on the Z axis like this. I'm going to hold shift, then press D to duplicate this. I'm going to right click to get the duplicate to stay in place. And then I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis to make that somewhat longer. I'm going to now press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to roll my mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to press A to select everything, A to deselect everything, just so I know nothing is selected. I'm going to hover here, press L, hold shift, then press D. To duplicate, I right click to get that duplicate to stay in place. For this particular duplicate, I'm going to go to the right view. I'm going to press A to deselect and press Z, then go to uh, wireframe. I'm going to press B for box select. I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to press X to bring up our delete menu, then choose faces to delete. I'm going to hover here, press L. I'm then going to press R to rotate on the X axis 180 to turn it 180 degrees. I'm then going to push this so it touches itself. I want this to be right pretty much in the center of the nose. I'm going to press Z and then go to solid view. I'm going to hover here, hold shift, then while holding shift, press B to draw a zoom box. I'm going to push this towards itself some more. Press R to rotate on the X axis like this. On the vertices select, I'm just pulling that back some. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here, press L, hold shift, then press D. I'm then going to right click to get that duplicate to stay in place. I'm going to lift this up, pull this back. Like 
that. Hold them in a mouse button and take a look. I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to go to edge select. I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to hold alt. Oh, I can't do that. Okay. Click here, hold shift. Pull that to the side, something like that. I'm going to click here. I'll press A to deselect. I'll click here, hold shift, then press S. This brings up our snap menu. I'll choose cursor to selected. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. I'll hover here. Press A to deselect. While hovering over here, I'll press L, hold shift, then press D. This duplicates this piece of mesh. I'll push this to the side. I'll hold shift. While holding shift, press S. This brings up our snap menu. I'll choose selection of cursor offset. I'm going to unclick this clipping so that these two pieces don't stay locked together. Just press an S to scale them down. I'm going to press S R to rotate, not S R to rotate on the X axis 180. Then left click to lock that in. Press S to scale. Down something like that. I'll press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold control and the middle mouse button to zoom back. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate. Hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to go to vertices select. I'm going to click right here. I'm going to hold shift and then while holding shift, press S. This brings up our snap to menu. I'm going to choose cursor to selected. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to press A to deselect the vertices. I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to hover here, press L, hold shift, then press D. Right click to get that duplicate we just made from pressing shift and D to stay in place. I'm going to push this to the side. I'm then going to hold shift, press S. This brings up our snap to menu. I'm then going to choose selection to, cur selection to cursor offset. I'm then going to press R to rotate on the X axis. I'm then going to press S to scale. Go this more. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to get an edge select. I'm going to hold Alt select. Oops, select here. Push this down some. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here. Before I hover there, let me go to face select. I'm going to hover here, press L for face select. I'm going to hold shift, press D. Right click to get that to stay in place and then pull this back. Push this over. That's to scale that. Some I'll push this in right here. I'm gonna push that down some. I'll press R to rotate on the Z axis. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'll press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold control and the middle mouse button to zoom back. 
that face select on. I'm going to hover here, press L, and press X to bring up our delete menu, then choose faces to delete. I'm going to hold Alt, and then while holding Alt, press H to bring back our wings. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here, hold Control. While holding Control, I'm going to press R. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel one time to put two loop cuts in. I'm going to left click once, then left click a second time to lock those loop cuts in. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to click here to go to face select. I'm going to hold Alt, then while holding Alt, I'm going to click here. I'm going to pull this back like that. I'm going to press A to deselect. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm going to press Z, then go to wireframe. I'm going to hold the right mouse button while holding the control key to make a lasso to select to select right here. I'm going to press R to rotate on the Z axis like that. Then I'm going to press R to rotate on the X. Hold the I'm going to R to rotate on the X axis like this. Pull this up some. Now I'm going to press or rotate on the Y axis. Careful about having your wings cross over. Or rotate on the Y axis. Like that. Now I'm going to press S to scale on the Z axis. Pull this up some like this. Uh, okay, pull back some like that. Press S to scale on the Z axis more. I'm going to press R to rotate on the X axis more like this. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to click here to go to right view. I'm going to hover here. Press B for box select. Grab here. Pull this out like this. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here. Hold control. While holding control, I'm going to press. R. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel twice to put two loop cuts in there. Left click, left click a second time to lock that in. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to press Z, then go to solid view. Okay, I'm going to click here to go to face select. I'm going to hold Alt, and then while holding Alt, click here. Push this up like that. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here. Hold shift and while holding shift press B to draw a zoom box to zoom in. I'm going to click here to go to face select. I'm going to pull this to the side here. Hold this here. I'm going to press A to deselect and hold control and the middle mouse button to zoom back some. I'm going to hold control while pressing R to put a loop cut in. I'm going to left click right here. Press S to scale. Then press A to deselect. I'm going to go to face select, click here, hold shift while holding shift, press S. This brings up our snap to menu. I'm going to choose cursor to selected. Okay, with that done, I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan the view. Hold shift and middle mouse button to pan the view again. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here, press L. Hold shift while holding shift press D. I'm then going to right click to get that duplicate to stay in place. I'm then going to hold shift and then while holding shift press S. This brings up our snap to menu. I'm then going to choose selection to cursor offset. I'm then going to hold control and the middle mouse button to zoom back. I'm going to hold control and the middle mouse button to zoom in. Hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. I'm then going to press R to rotate on the Z axis like this. I'll press R to rotate on the Z axis, some more like that. I'm going to press R to rotate on the X axis. I'll press S to scale this up some. I'll press R to rotate on the. Nope. I'm going to right click R to rotate. Y axis like that. 
and we'll then press A to deselect and just hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Okay, we're gonna click here to go to object mode. We're gonna we're currently in local mode. We're gonna click here to go back to global mode. I'm gonna roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm gonna hold shift and middle mouse button to pan. Hold shift and middle mouse button to pan some more. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm gonna click on our T because it rotate. I'm gonna click here. We're gonna press X to bring up our delete menu, then delete that eye. I click back on our teeth as I rotate. I'm gonna click this eye, bring this up, push this forward. Let's take a look at it. Okay, we're going to click here to go to the front orthographic view. Let's push our T forward, go back to front orthographic view. Just putting our teeth in place. Hold them in a mouse button to take a look at them. Okay, let's go back to front orthographic view again. I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I had deleted the other eye simply because it's easier to put this eye into place and then just duplicate it again and re-put it on the other side. Okay, so what we're going to do is hold shift and press C. Put the, that puts the 3D cursor right there. I'm going to hold shift and press B to draw a zoom box right here. Currently, our pivot point is the median point, which Blender's default pivot point. We're going to click here to change it to the 3D cursor. We're going to click this eye, hold shift, then press D, which duplicated the eye. I'm going to right click to get that eye to jump right back in its place. I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis, negative one, and then left click to lock that eye into place. I'm then going to click here and change the pivot point from the 3D cursor back to Blender's default pivot point, which is the median point. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, we're going to hold control to uh, zoom our view back. We're then going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate our view. Okay, what we're going to do now is click on our mesh. We're going to hold control, and then while holding control, press 2. This added a subdivision surface to our mesh. We're now going to press Z and then select Shade Smooth. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and just take a look at what we have. Okay, you can see when we put the subdivision surface on, things like this uh, became smooth. So what we need to do is click back on our mesh, click here, go to edit mode. We'll then click here to make it look like our subdivision surface has been applied. Okay, now these pieces of mesh look very smooth now and uh, too soft to me. One of the uh, benefits of taking objects like this and using them over and over again is that we can, we need to select these and make these harder. So the first thing we need to do is thinking about, you know, selecting uh, these. So one of the benefits is uh, we can make sure we're on face select, hold L, select here. Then we can go to select, select similar, and then go to face region. So we select, you know, what's similar here. Now remember, we chopped this in half, right? Anyway, with this selected, I'm going to hover here, hold shift, then press B, then draw a zoom box to zoom in. There's multiple ways we can make these uh, pieces of mesh harder. 
if we are planning to bring this into an, uh, another program other than Blender, we might want to bevel to make these sharper. However, what we're going to use for now is we're going to use a, a mean crease. And the way we do that is we hold shift, then we press E, and then we pull. And by pulling, we pull all the way. It's totally hard, right? We don't want that. We want it kind of hard, but not totally. So I'm going to left click here. So now we have these objects harder than they were. Uh, these lines let you know that you, you do have a mean crease on here. If you don't like the mean crease, you can press N. If you don't like, like having those lines there, you can press N. This brings up your properties panel, and then you can come down here where you see mesh display. You can un take this check mark away from creases. So I'm going to press N to bring that back. So now we want to select these. So I'm going to press L to select this one right here. I'm then going to go to select. Select similar. I'm going to then go down to face regions. So now we have all of these selected. Okay, so with those all selected, we're going to hold shift and press E and then pull. And just make them somewhat sharper. Then we'll press A to deselect them. Okay, often when you work to add more geometry to your mesh, it's easier to turn off your subdivision surface. I'm going to click this eye to temporarily turn off our subdivision surface modifier. Okay, so I'm going to hold shift and the mouse button to pan. I'm going to rotate the view like this. I'm going to make sure I have face select on, which I do. And then I'm going to press E to extrude like this. Be careful because as this is extruding, it's going towards the center point. So you want to pull that. Just be aware. I'm going to press uh, E to extrude again. I'm going to press S to scale this. I'm going to then press A to deselect, hover here, hold control, and then while holding control, press R. Then I'm going to left click to put a loop cut in. I'm going to left click a second time to lock that in. Then I'm going to pull this up some. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to hold Alt, then click here, pull this up some. Like that. And I'm just looking at this has one, two, three, four. This has one, two, three. So I'm going to hold control, then press R, then put a, another loop cut right here. And then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, so what we're going to do is now is click here to turn our proportional, not our proportional, we're going to turn our uh, subdivision surface modifier back on. Let's put a check mark here to make sure our clipping is back on as well for our mirror modifier. Okay, I'm going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to mouse button to pan the view. I'm going to hover here, hold shift and press B, then draw a zoom box to zoom in right here. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom in. This is popping out a little here. What I want here is I'm going to, with edge select, I'm going to pull this up some like that. Push this in some like that. This I'm going to grab and pull to the side some like that. I'm going to go to face select now. I'm going to click view global slash local. I'm going to hold shift and press B. I just wanted that face right there. So I'm going to click view global slash local again. Just pulling this out. So now with that out, I know how deep we can go. So now I'm going to press C to paint select this entire area here. With the exception of here, I'm going to hold shift and click that. Oh, that's coming to okay. So I pulled out to the side some here. I want to push this in some here now. Kind 
Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold shift and then the mouse button to pan. I'm going to go to edge select. I'm going to click here. Pull this out to the side, something like that. What I want is I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to click here, then click here. I'm then going to hold control. Actually, I'm not going to hold. I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to bridge right here. So I'm going to press W. This brings up our specials menu. I'm then going to go to loop tools. Then I'm going to select bridge. And the reason why I did that is I kind of wanted. Uh, like a piece of skin right here. So I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold down the mouse button, rotate the view. I'm going to go to face select, which we're on. Pull that back, something like that. I'm going to press S to scale, something like that. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to click on our eye here. Hold shift and click here. I'm going to pull this down some like that. I'm just taking a look at it. I'm going to go to edge select. Click this edge here. this out some click here pull that out some and then click here hold shift and push this in some like that click here push that in some like that and then gonna press A to deselect I'm going to hold the mouse button, rotate the view. I'm going to go to face select, click here. Now I'm looking at this because I'm just, I want to make sure that. If this is animated, uh, you know, it has the ability to shut its eyes. So I'm going to press A to deselect. I'll roll the mouse wheel to zoom back some. Okay, I'm holding the middle mouse button just to rotate the view. I'm going to hold control on the middle mouse button to zoom back some. Okay, I'm going to go to edge select, click here, hold shift, and then click here. Push this like here. See that bunch up right there? So be careful of that. Push this out some. Click here. Push this forward some. Down some like this. Press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here, press L, then hold shift, press D to duplicate, then right click to get this to stay in place. I'm then going to press S to scale on the Z axis, negative one, and then left click to lock that in. Then I'm going to take the manipulator and push this straight down. This has a strange color to it because the uh, normals are not correct so I'm going to hold control while holding control I'm going to press N to recalculate the normals so I'm just going to pull this back and press R to rotate on the X axis I'm 
press S to scale. And press R to rotate on the X axis. I'm gonna press A to deselect. Okay, let's make our eyes smaller. So we're gonna click here, we're gonna go object mode. And while we deleted this eye previously to you know basically get it back in its correct position we don't have to do that as far as shrinking our eyes what we can do is we can hold shift to select both of our eyes then we can click here which is our pivot point we can change our pivot point to individual options or individual uh, origins and then we can press s to scale and you see that both eyes you know shrink at the same time which is nice and then we can just you know we'll push these down something like that so now with that done we'll click here we'll click here change our pivot point from individual origins back to the medium point then we'll with our mesh clicked on here we'll click here then go back to edit mode okay what we're going to do now is hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view i'm going to go to edge select i'm going to click this edge here hold shift and click this edge here push this down pull that back I'm gonna press A to deselect I'm gonna hold alt and then while holding alt I'm gonna click this edge right here I'm gonna press S to scale push this in push this back then press S to scale just so that the smaller eyes Have the eye sockets adjusted to them. I'm going to press A to deselect. So I'm going to hold them in the mouse button, rotate the view. I'm going to click here, hold shift, then click here. Push that down. Something like that. I'm going to press A to deselect, click here, hold shift, then click here. Hold them in the mouse button, rotate the view. So I'm going to Push this down some. I'm gonna press S to scale some. Okay, I'm gonna press A to deselect now. Okay, I'm gonna hold control on the middle mouse button to zoom back. I'm gonna get a face select. I'm gonna hold. Alt then click here. I'm gonna hold Alt then press S. Hold Shift for fine selection to make this thicker. I'm gonna press A to deselect. I'm gonna hold Alt here. I'm gonna press S to scale on the X axis to make that thicker there. I'm going to hold alt then click here hold alt then press s hold shift for fine selection to make this thicker here press a to deselect i'm going to hold control then press r to put a loop cut in right here i'm going to left click to lock it in i'm going to back some like that with that done i'm going to go to face select hold alt and click right here then hold alt while holding s then shift for fine control to make this thicker i'm going to press a to deselect i'm going to hold alt to select right here i'm going to hold alt then press s hold shift for fine control to make this thicker i'm going to press oops i pressed s and then scaled i'm going to press uh, a to deselect i'm going to go to edge select I'm going to hold Alt, then select here, which is where I want. Pull this up, so I'm going to press R to rotate on the X axis, like that. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold Alt. Pull this up, something like that. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to go to Face Select, select here, hold Shift. Push this down, something like that. Select here, hold shift, push this down some like that. Click 
click here push that down some like that I go to edge select click here move up just slightly I'm gonna press A to deselect I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to press Z, go to wireframe. I'm going to hold control as well as the right mouse button, draw a lasso select around the head. I'm going to press C for paint select, hold the middle mouse button to deselect right there. I'm then going to right click to get out of uh, paint select. I want the head to be a little bit bigger compared to the body. However, we have, you know, the teeth and all these, you know, the eyeballs. So we select the head. And then I'll uh, hold control, then press I to invert our selection. So we select everything else. What we're going to do is press S to scale. So we just make the body smaller. So now I'll press A to deselect. I'll press Z and go to solid view. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go to Edge Select. I'm going to hold Alt, then select here. Hold Shift. While holding Alt, select here, as well as here. I'm going to hold Shift and Alt still and select. Try to select here. Okay, now I'm going to hold Alt. While holding Alt, press S. I'm going to hold Shift for Find Control. make the neck thicker. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold control then press R to put another loop cut in right here. I'm going to press S to scale here. I'm going to press S to scale on that X axis here. Push this in some. I'm going to hold Alt click here. Push this in some. gonna hold alt here just like that loop hold alt and s and press shift for find control for right here and hold alt here press r to rotate pull that back some and press a to deselect I still want the head bigger. I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button, rotate the view. I'm going to press Z. Go to wireframe. And press A to deselect and grab. For the most part, just the head. I'm going to press C. And then hold the middle mouse button to deselect there. And then I'm going to hold control. Then press I to invert. And then I'm going to press S to scale. Taking a manipulator to push this forward some, a little bit less wide. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to grab this tail area here. Hold control as well as the right mouse button to drag this tail area. I'm going to press A to deselect. And then I'm going to press Z, then select solid to go to wire view. There we go.
Okay, I'm going to hold control and I'm going to mouse button to zoom in. Just taking a look. Okay, I'm going to hold them in the mouse button, rotate the view. I'm going to click here to go to Edge Select. I'm going to hold Shift as well as Alt. I'm then going to click here while holding Shift as well as Alt. Then click here while holding Shift as well as Alt. I'm going to hold Alt, then press S. Hold Shift for Find Control and then scale up like that. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, we're going to hold Control as well as the middle mouse button to zoom forward. We're going to hold Shift and the middle mouse button to pan. Hold them in the mouse button to rotate the view. Okay, what we're going to do now is go to face select. We're going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to left click here, hold shift, then left click here. I'm going to, I'm still holding shift, I'm clicking here as well as here. So with that done, I'm going to press E to extrude. I'm then going to right click to get that extrusion to stay in place. I'm then going to hold control and while holding control, press E. This brings up our edges menu. I'm then going to select bridge edge loops. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover here, hold control. While holding control, I'm going to press R. I'm going to put Left click to put a loop cut in. I'm going to left click a second time to put uh, another loop cut in. I did that because I don't want the part of this wing to connect all the way to here. So with that loop cut uh, put in there, we're going to click here to go to face select. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to left click here, hold shift, then left click here. Still holding shift, I'm going to left click here as well as here hold the middle mouse button I let go of shift so I can rotate the view I'm now holding shift again I'm gonna left click here still holding shift I'm gonna left click here okay now what we're gonna do is hold control and then while holding control press E to bring up our edges menu I'm then gonna select bridge edge loops I'm then gonna press A to deselect Okay, I'm going to hold control as well as the middle mouse button to zoom back some. I'm going to hover here. I'm going to hold control. While holding control, I'm going to press R. I'm going to left click because I only left click once. I can move this loop cut, so I'm going to move it like that. I'm then going to left click a second time to lock that in. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold control. While holding control, press R to put a loop cut in. I'm going to left click once because I only left click once. I can move this loop cut. I'm then going to left click to lock that in. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, so we're going to hover here, hold control, while holding control, press R. I'm going to left click once, because I only left click once, I can move this loop cut, so I'm going to left click there. I'm now going to press A, and I'm going to hover here, hold control, while holding control, press R. I'm going to left click once, because I only left click once, I can move this loop cut, so I'm going to put it there. And then I'm going to left click to lock that in, and then press A to deselect. Okay, now we're going to go to uh, face select. Click here, hold control, and then left click while holding control. This did something called the uh, the shortest path, I guess technique you would say, where you click here, hold control, and then click there. Blender then finds this, the uh, shortest path between the two points. I'm going to press C to paint select. Then I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. Okay, I'm going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to click our eye on our mirror modifier. I'm going to press C for paint select here. Let's paint this right here. I'm still on paint select. I rolled the mouse wheel just to shrink the uh, area of influence of the paint select. I'm holding the middle mouse button to deselect right there. I'm going to 
press C for paint select again. Just right click to get out of paint select. Okay, so with all that selected, I'm going to hold Alt, then while holding Alt, press S. And then I'm going to hold Shift for fine uh, control. And I'm just making this wing thicker. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to click this I to bring our I back. Or to bring our mirror modifier back. Okay, I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hover here, hover here, hold shift and press B. Draw a zoom box to zoom in. I'm going to hover here, hold control while holding control, press R to put a loop cut. I'm going to left click once. Move that loop cut up. Hold control. There's another loop cut here. Like that. I'm gonna we want more I want more detail for the for the face. Uh sharper edges, so I'm gonna hold control, press R, then put a loop cut in like this. I'm gonna press A to D select for the I here. I'm gonna hold control, press R, left click, and then push in like this. Then press A to deselect. I'm gonna Hold control while holding control, press R to put a loop cut in here. I'm going to go to face select, then click here, hold shift as well as here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button, rotate. I'm going to hold Alt, then press O to turn on connected proportional editing. I'm going to press G, and then X, and push this in like this. You can see this is coming out. I rolled the mouse wheel to zoom in. I'm going to hold control the middle mouse button to, to zoom in. So we're going to press G, shrink this down very small, press X to pull this out to the side. Let's click here, as well as here, as well as here, as well as here. Then press G, then X to pull that out to the side. I'm going to press O to go to regular proportional editing, then O to turn proportional editing off again. I'm trying to push here without. Okay. Let's hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm going to go to face select, I'm going to press H, hide that, click here, press H, hide that, and click here, click here, I'm going to right click, hmm, that's interesting. Let me go to this turn the mirror modifier off and here's our nostril part right here I'm trying to select this part oh I get it that's our gum that's why I can't select it okay let's click on our gum click here to go to local mode click here go to edit mode I'm gonna hover here press S to scale let me I don't want to do that I want everything so I'm gonna grab everything press S to scale on the X axis push this in towards itself A to deselect. I'll click here to go back to global mode. 
Oh. Okay, so. I'm going to click here, go to object mode, click here, turn back on our mirror modifier. Holding shift and middle mouse button to pan, I'm going to click here to go to edit mode. I'm going to hold alt then press H to bring back this hidden geometry. I just rolled the mouse wheel to zoom in. I'm pushing in further now. Good. So now because that geometry is pushed in some more. Not too much. Just pull that back. So let's press A to deselect. Okay. We've got an edge select. Should push this down. Press S to scale. Pull that out some. Click here. Pull this out some. Click here. Pull that out some. I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold control the middle mouse button and zoom back. I'm going to go to edge select. Okay, just small adjustments. You got to tell yourself a lot of times when you're working on tutorials that you're doing a tutorial so you can keep moving forward. Okay, we need to unwrap this now. So that means we're gonna put in scenes so that we can lay this out as a UV map. So what we're gonna do is press N to pull up our properties panel. We're gonna unclick creases so we don't see the uh, sharp edges so that doesn't confuse us as we work to unwrap. And I can see this isn't attached here. I'm going to press L, push that in. There we go. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to press N to take away that properties panel right there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're mainly going to be using our edge tool here. We're going to hold Alt, then select here we're then going to hold control and then while holding control press e to bring up our edges menu and then with this edges menu up we're going to click mark seam we're then going to press a to deselect okay we're going to hold control and the middle mouse button to zoom in We're going to hold Alt. I'm going to take off our mirror modifier here. I'm also going to go to local mode. Go on the mouse wheel to zoom in. Holding Shift as well as Alt. Grab the seam here. Okay, so with that seam selected, we're going to hold control. Then while holding control, we're going to press E. We're then going to select mark seam. We're then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back to zoom back. Shift the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold Alt, then click here. Hold Shift. I'm 
I just was holding alt and shift, letting go, you know, when I needed to, to uh, push the middle mouse button to rotate the view. So with this selected, I'm going to hold control. Then while holding control, I'm going to press E. I'm then going to select make seam or mark seam, not make seam, mark seam. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to go to face select. I'm then going to hold alt. Then while holding alt, I'm going to left click here. Then press H to hide that geometry there. Okay, now I'm going to hold alt again. With face select on, click here. And then press H to hide that geometry. Okay, when that with that geometry not in view, now we should be able to go to edge select, hold shift as well as alt, and fairly easily be able to select the seam that we want. Let's zoom in. Okay, so with that selected. I'm going to hold control while holding control press E. This brings up our edges menu. I'm then going to select the mark seam. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold control as well as the mouse button to zoom back. I'm going to hold alt. Then while holding alt press H to unhide our geometry. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm going to click here down just slightly because I can see this geometry popping through there. Okay, and then here, just hold the middle mouse button, rotate the view. Okay, so here what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift as well as alt, click here. Holding the middle mouse button, I let go of shift as well as alt to, move, to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm now reholding shift as well as alt. I'm letting go of shift and alt to uh, you know pan the view by holding shift in the middle mouse button. I'm now holding shift alt and then clicking again. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm holding shift so we can just select these. pieces here, holding shift and the middle mouse button, rotate the view, I'm now just holding shift. So with that done, I'm going to hold control, while holding control, I'm going to press E, this brings up our edges menu, I'm then going to select mark seam, I'm then going to press A to deselect, I'm going to click here, push this down just for that geometry that was coming through, I'm going to press A to deselect. Just looking here. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. I'm gonna hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm gonna hold shift as well as alt, then select right here. Hold the middle mouse button, you know, to turn the view. I'm gonna hold control, then while holding control, press E. This brings up our edges menu. I'm gonna select mark seam, and then I'm gonna press A to deselect. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to hold Alt here. I'm going to hold Control, press E, and then select Mark Seam. I'm also going to click here. Hold Shift and click here, and then select Mark Seam. Then I'm going to press A to deselect.
Okay, I'm gonna hold shift as well as alt. I'm going to hold shift as well as alt here. Left clicking, I let go. Holding shift as well as alt again. I'm going to hold control, then press E, select the mark seam. I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold down the mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold alt. Well, the shift, you know, to select here. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna press V to rip this. Now, with that ripped, I'm gonna press A to deselect. I'm gonna hover here, hold Control, and then while holding Control, I'm gonna put a loop right here. Then left click once, then left click a second time to totally lock that in. I'm then gonna hold Control, and then while holding Control, press E. This brings up our edges menu. I'm then gonna select the mark seam. I'm then gonna press A to deselect. Okay, basically what's going on is here is we're trying to set up these seams so that we can lay our dragon out flat. So I'm going to put a loop right here. I'm going to hold control. While holding control, I'm going to press R to put a loop cut in. I'm going to left click once, left click a second time to put that loop in. I'm then going to hold control. Then while holding control, press E. Then I'm going to select mark seam. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here, hold control. While holding control, press R. I'm then going to left click once, left click a second time, and then hold control. While holding control, press E, and then select mark seam, and then press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold control as well as the middle mouse button to zoom back. We ripped here so that we could put this uh, edge loop in to put a seam here to make things easier to UV map. I believe that if we press, because we ripped this, but it's in the same position, if we press A to select all of our mesh, go to vertices select and then press W to bring up our specials menu if we select remove doubles we remove all of our doubled vertices which should be right here as well and then when we click to see if this is still ripped so I'm pulling up and it looks like it's not ripped it's connected so I'm gonna right click to get that to jump right back into place so basically uh, what happened was is we ripped here just for this then when we removed the doubles, double vertices, I mean, Blender rejoined this. So that's a nice little technique. I, I think I had learned that before. I guess, I, well, I obviously I'd learned it before if I think of it, it now, but I hadn't thought of that. And that is a nice technique. Okay, I'm going to hold shift the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to click here to turn our mirror modifier back on. Okay, now what we want to do is hold Alt. Then while holding Alt, click the center line for our dragon. We're then going to hold Control. While holding Control, press E. We're then going to select the mark seam. We're then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold Shift and the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to zoom in. Let's click here, 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 here. Push down slightly to deal with that. Let's press A to D select. Let's hold Alt and then click. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view while letting go of Shift and Alt. Reselecting them. Now I'm just holding Shift. I'm going to hold Shift and Alt right here as well as right here. And then I'm going to just hold Shift. Holding Shift and the middle mouse button to pan. Now I'm holding the shift. Okay, now I'm going to hold control. While holding control, press E. I'm then going to, that brought up our edges menu. I'm then going to select the mark seam. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold the mouse button to rotate. I'm going to hold shift and the mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold the mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold shift as well as alt to select right here. Okay, with that selected, I'm holding the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold control. While holding control, I'm going to press E. This brings up our edges menu. I'm going to select mark seam. 
to mark the seam, I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold control in the middle mouse button and zoom out. Let's take a look at what we have. Zoom in here. I'm going to hold Alt. select this right here I'm gonna hold control then press E I'm then gonna select mark seam I'm then gonna press A to deselect okay with edge select still one let me press A to select everything then A to deselect everything I'm gonna hold alt while holding alt I'm gonna click here and then gonna hold control then press E I'm then gonna select mark seam and then I'm going to press A to D select. I'm going to hover here, hold Alt, left click, hold Control, then press E, then select Mark Seam. Then I'm going to press A to D select. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. What we're going to do is hover here. Well, let's go to Face Select first. Let's hover here, press L, hold Shift, then press H. This hides everything but this I'm going to press A to deselect I'm going to go to edge select I'm going to hold alt while holding alt I'm going to click here I'm then going to hold control while holding control I'm going to press E this brings up our edges menu I'm going to select mark seam I'm then going to press A to deselect Okay, and now I'm going to hold Alt, and then while holding Alt, press H to bring back everything. I'm then going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom out some. I'm going to hold Shift and middle mouse button to pan. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I want to select all of the pieces like this, so I'm going to go to Face Select, hover here, press L. Then go to Select, go to Select Similar, then select Face Regions. Oh, I see. Okay, so when you press, uh, when you press, when you put a seam on and then you press L, you only select what's in the seam, which is actually very useful, but we only select half of that. So let's press L to the other side and try this again. So we'll go to select and then uh, select similar. And we'll go down to face regions. And now we have all of these selected. Okay, so now that we have these pieces of mesh selected, we're going to hold shift and then while holding shift, we're going to press H. And what that did was that hid all of our geometry other than what we currently have selected. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to go here to our mirror modifier and click here so we can you know, work with less uh, pieces of mesh, mesh here. So I'm going to go to edge select. I'm going to hold alt click here I'm gonna hold shift while I hold alt then click there and I'm just clicking the center line I'm letting go of shift and alt I'm holding shift and middle mouse button to pan the view I'm gonna zoom in here by rolling the mouse I'm gonna hold shift and alt then click here hold shift and alt then click there okay so with all those clicked I'm gonna hold control while holding control I'm gonna press E and then I'm gonna select mark seam and then I'm gonna press A to deselect Okay, now I'm going to hold Alt, and then while holding Alt, press H to bring back the rest of our geometry. I'm going to click this eye so we can see our mirror modifier uh, part of the mesh show up as well. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, uh, let's put a uh, let's put a a seam right here. So I'm going to hold Alt. And then click right here. I'm then going to hold control. And then while holding control, press E. I'm then going to select mark seam. I'm then going to press A to deselect. 
Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold control on the middle mouse button to zoom in. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate, then hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. We're on edge select. I'm going to hold alt. I'm going to click right here while holding alt. I'm zooming in by rolling the mouse wheel. I'm going to hold shift to select that edge right there. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm holding shift again. Now I'm holding shift, still holding shift, and then clicking there. Okay, now I'm going to hold control, and then while holding control, press E. This brings up our edges menu. I'm then going to select mark seam. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, and we're picking these seams, just planning to, when it comes to us finally laying this UV map out, Hopefully, things will be as flat as possible. Okay, as you're doing this, you want to think of you know, ways that you can save time. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to hover here, then press L. I want to put a seam right here. So with this selected, I'm going to hold Shift. I'm then going to press H. Now, because I hit that other geometry, now I can hold Shift and the middle mouse button to pan, hold Control and the middle mouse button to zoom in. I can go to Edge Select. Hold Alt, then select the seam right here. I'm putting this seam here because if you could imagine this being a piece of cloth, if we you know laid this out, there's a good chance it would still be bunched up if this is one big piece. But if this is a piece right here, you know here and here, this should be flat. So with this edge selected, I'm going to hold Control while holding Control. I'm going to press E to bring up our edges panel. I'm then going to select Mark Seam. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to hold Alt, and then while holding Alt, press H to bring back the rest of our geometry. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold Control as well as the middle mouse button to zoom back. I'm going to hold Shift and the middle mouse button here. I'm looking at this leg here. We have a seam here and a seam here. I want to put a seam here. I want to do that because when you put your seams on your mesh, you want to put seams in places where they'll be less visible so the seam on the inside of the leg is less visible than the seam would be here okay one of the things that's useful about having uv seams is when you go to face select normally if you don't have seams and you hover over a uh, part of a mesh you select that entire mesh when you have seams on something though and you're on face select and you hover over a piece of a mesh you'll select all of that mesh till you you know uh go to the seams so i'm going to hover here press l so we select just this part of the mesh and now we'll hold shift and then press h to hide the rest of our geometry okay so with just this mesh visible here i'll hold the middle mouse button to rotate i'll click here to go to edge select i'll hold alt i'll click here i'll hold control then press E. This brings up our edges menu. I'll select Mark Seam. I'll then press A to deselect. Okay, so I'll hold Alt. And then while holding Alt, I'll press H to bring back the rest of our geometry. I'll then press A to deselect. Okay, I think we should be seams for our main dragon mesh. I'm going to click here. Go to object mode. I'm going to, we're in local mode currently. I'm going to click here to go to global mode. So I'm going to, we already have our dragon mesh selected. If you don't click on it, I'm going to press H to hide it. I'm going to click on an eye here. I'm going to hover here, hold shift, and then while holding shift, press B to zoom into the eye. Okay, what we're going to do now is click right here where it says view global slash local. We're then going to click here, then go to edit mode. Okay, we're going to make sure we're on edge select, which we are. We're going to hold alt, click here. And then hold control then while holding control press e this brings up our edges menu we're then going to select mark seam we're then going to press a to deselect we're then going to hold alt then click here hold control while holding control press e this brings up our edges menu then select mark seam 
then press A to deselect. Okay, now we're going to click right to go to right view. We're going to hold Alt, then click right here. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm then going to press and hold Control. While holding Control, I'm going to press E. It brings up our edges menu. I'm then going to select Mark Seam. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to click here to come back to object mode. I'm then going to click View Global Slash Local to come back so we can see the rest of our mesh here that's not hidden at the moment anyway. Okay, we're going to click on this mesh. I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to click view global slash local. I'm then going to click here to go to edit mode. Okay, let's roll the mouse wheel to zoom in. Now, what we could have done was we could have put one, we could have taken one tooth and put uh, uh, seams on it and then duplicated the teeth after. However, the, you know, the, the seam is not, that's what I would recommend that you do. However, this isn't uh, complicated to put the seams on here. So we're gonna hold shift and then while holding shift, we're gonna click alt right in the center. Just let go of shift and alt to hold the mouse button to rotate. Now I'm holding shift as well as alt again. Okay, now with all of those teeth selected, I'm going to hold control. And then while holding control, I'm going to press E. It brings up our edges menu. I'm then going to select mark seam. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click here. While holding shift, I'm going to hold control to choose the shortest path. Holding shift. Now I'm holding control. The shortest path just, you know, skips, allows me to skip those two vertices right there. I'm going to hold shift again, hold control, then click here. Holding shift again. Now while holding shift, holding control here. Holding shift the middle mouse button to pan. Now I'm going to hold control. And then while holding control, press E. I'm then going to select mark seam. And I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold control and the middle mouse button to zoom back. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to click here to go to object mode. Okay, now I'm going to click here where it says view global slash local. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. I'm going to press a to D select. I'm going to hold Alt and while holding Alt press H. Okay, what we're going to do now is roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. We're going to click on our main dragon mesh. I'm going to hover over. It looks like this. It looks like almost like a triangular shape with stripes in it. I'm going to left click here and drag to the side to make a new window here. Okay, now I'm going to click here and then I'm going to select UV slash image editor okay now with my main dragon mesh selected I'm going to click here go to edit mode I'm going to press A to select the entire mesh I'm then going to press U this brings up our UV mapping menu I'm then going to select unwrap
Okay, this is our dragon mesh laid out. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom in. For the most part, it looks good with the exception of this. When I look at our mesh, I can see we have seams here, but I'm looking here and seeing that we don't have seams here. So I'm going to press A to deselect. By the way, when I say seams, I mean seam. Uh, there's one seam here. Okay, so there's no seam here. So one of the things that we can do to see what's on our mesh compared to what's over here in our uh, UV image editor window, if we can go to face select, we can then hover here, press L, and then only what's here. And the reason why we only see this instead of the whole mesh is because we have one seam here and then one seam here. So when we pressed L with the face select, it only selects the area in between these two seams. So we can see right there. And this, you know, doesn't look right. So what we can do is I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to go to edge select. I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to hover here, press L, hold shift, then press H. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to go to Edge Select. Then I'm going to hold Alt. And while holding Alt, click here. And then I'm going to hold Control. While holding Control, I'm going to press E. This brings up our Edges menu. I'm then going to select Mark Seam. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to hold Alt. Then press H to bring back our previously hidden geometry. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, so when we have an issue with a seam, we can very easily go back, add a seam, then press A to select everything again. You know, here's the issue here. We still see the issue here because I didn't re-unwrap this. So with the new seam in there, I'll just press U. That brings up our UV mapping menu, and then I'll select unwrap again. And then now we can see the changes. Okay, and our... UV map for the most part looks flat. There's some things that we can do to this. However, this tutorial is already probably pretty long, so this should this should be let's see. I'm gonna click uh UV and then I'm gonna click average island scale. We got minimal change right there. We could manually go in and make changes here. For instance, uh, things that are advantageous to make changes to. I'm gonna press A to deselect. I'm gonna hover here, then press L. I'm gonna press G, pull this down. I'm gonna press A to deselect, hover here, press L. I'm gonna press G to move this over. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to press B for box select. I'm going to press G to move this down. Basically what I'm doing now, I'm going to press L here. Press G to move this down. We want this all in the UV. I want to make give some room right here because this is basically our, our head. So uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to hover here, press L, press G. Press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hover here, press L. I'm going to press R to rotate. Press G. Move that, and then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hover here, press L. Press G. Then press S to scale. Press G. Press that's the scale. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now with our UV map laid out, what we want to do now is click New. We're going to name this Base. 
This is the main base image we're going to be putting on our mesh. I'm going to click here and change this to 2048 width by 2048 height. When we click here, this looks just like a black color. However, when we click this and make this go up, we can see we have more colors here. We're going to make like a brick kind of like color there. We're then going to click OK. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. When we see this image right here, this little symbol right here shows us that this image isn't saved. So we're going to click here. We're then going to select Save Image As. I had worked on this before. You can see here is the uh, base uh, .png name. What I did before was I made a new folder. You would just click here, you know, I named it textures. So I'm just going to click here and then save over this. So now we have our base image saved there. Then what we would do is click this plus button again. Click here. And then uh, this is going to be our ambient occlusion. So we'll just click AO for short for ambient occlusion. Our width is 2048, which is good. Our height is 2048, which is good. We'll click here. Uh, our ambient occlusion will be like a grayish color. This doesn't matter the color, by the way. I'm just so if I go to look at this just to help see what it is, but the color doesn't matter for ambient occlusion. So we're going to click OK. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to click this plus symbol again. We're going to name this normal map. Make sure that your height is uh, 2048. That's your uh, width I put in there. However, your height, you want it to be 2048 as well. It doesn't matter what the color is for the normal map. However, normal maps tend to look blue, so I'm just going to make it blue. But again, this color doesn't matter. For the normal map, I'm going to click OK now. OK, we have to click Image, Save as Image. You want to make sure that you're, when you have this, you don't have that little symbol there because basically what happens is if you make a normal map, right, you set all this up. If you go to uh, save your file and then open it up again, there's a good chance this won't be here anymore. These images, when I first started working with texture maps, I struggled to understand that when you save the Blender file, you weren't saving the texture map file. This file right here, even though we're looking at it in Blender, is saved outside of Blender, so it's its own separate file that Blender references. So uh, that little asterisk is there just to make sure that you don't lose your files. So again, Blender is one file, these are other files. It's actually not that big of a deal. When I first was doing this, I thought it was a big deal, it like bothered me. You make a folder, you take your images, you put them in that folder, you put them in the same folder as your Blender folder, it's, it's, it's no big deal. Anyway, uh, we're gonna click plus, we're gonna name this specular map this is 2048 by uh, uh sorry 2048 for width and 2048 by height if your still is good if this isn't 2048 width by 2048 height make sure that yours is for the color it's going to make it like a gray color this for, as far as Blender being saved as a specular map right now, the color doesn't matter. So I'm going to click OK. I'm then going to click Image, Save as Image. And then this is being saved to the textures uh, folder that I made before. Uh, I made it outside of this tutorial. It's just, you know, making a folder. But these are all my other images right here. So I'm going to click Save as Image. So now they're there. Okay, with that all done, what we're going to do now is open up another file of Blender. We're going to make a reptile skin. I'm going to press X to delete this cube. I'm going to hold Shift, then press A. Uh, this brings up our 
add to menu I'm going to select a mesh circle I'm then going to click here go to edit mode zoom in here I'm then going to press E to extrude right click we just made new geometry I'm now going to press S to scale and the zero axis left click to lock that in then press A to deselect I'm then going to hover my mouse here I'm going to hold control while holding control I'm going to press R I'm then going to roll the mouse wheel once twice three times four times and then gonna left click once then left click a second time to totally lock that in I'm then gonna press A to deselect okay what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna hover here press L press S to scale this up some I'm gonna click here change this pivot point to individual origins blenders default pivot point is the medium point I'm then with all of these selected I'm going to go to face select I'm going to hold alt and then while holding alt I'm going to press E this brings up our extrude menu I'm then going to select individual faces I'm then going to right click to get the extrusion to stay in place I'm then going to press S to scale this down I'm then going to hold shift then press D I'm then going to right click to get that geometry to stay in place. I'm then going to pull this geometry up. I'm then going to press E to extrude. And the Z axis. Okay, I'll press Z again since I lost it. And I just extruded them to a height like that. I'm going to hold control. While holding control, press L. I did that just to select all of this geometry right here. I'm now with all of that geometry selected right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control then press I to select everything but this geometry I'm then going to press X to bring up our delete menu then choose faces to delete okay now I'm going to press A to select all the geometry I'm going to hold control then press 2 to put a, a subdivision surface on there I'm going to press Z then select shade smooth I'm then going to hold shift and then while holding shift press E and then slightly pull to the side and basically what's going on here I'm going to click here is we are making scales so with our individual origins point still turned on I'm going to press S to scale and scale this up some that and I'm gonna press A to deselect shading looks weird because the normals are reversed it doesn't matter so much but to fix that we can hold control then press N to uh, recalculate our normals and I'm gonna press A to deselect okay I'm gonna zoom back some I'm gonna click on the camera I'm gonna hold alt then press R and then while holding alt I'm gonna press G I'm then gonna pull the camera up like this okay what I'm gonna do now is go to this checkered not checkered this stripe little triangular thing here pull a window out here I'm gonna while hovering here press T to take away that panel actually let me press T to bring it back I'm gonna go to navigation click view camera I'm then gonna press T to take away that panel right there okay so what we're gonna do now is push the camera like this okay what we're gonna do now is select this object here we're gonna click new we're gonna click here to uh, make the color like a grayish color it's a darker gray color we're then gonna put a check mark next to shade list here okay on this side we can hold shift and press Z to see what we're gonna get I like how this looks so I'm gonna hold shift and press Z again to come out of rendered mode that's what shift Z does it takes you into rendered mode okay so what we are going to do now is let's click here to go to our render tab we're gonna click instead of having this say image editor when we do a render we're gonna click here 
and change this to new window and then with that done what we're going to do is go here to render and then click render image and then we see this image here rendered we're now going to click image save as image I'm going to click here to make a folder named uh, images for dragon tutorial press enter this is very similar to how I made the the uh, folder for the textures that we have our other textures in I'm going to click on here and uh, I just want this to be named uh, reptile skin and then click save as image so now that we have that done we can click here to close this we can also click here to close I just like to deselect things <laughs> whatever uh, I'm just gonna click here to close this version of blender so here's our dragon right here what we're gonna do now is we're going to go to GIMP GIMP is a free image editor it's very similar to Photoshop Okay, GIMP is a free image editor. It's very good. What we're going to do is click File, Open. We're going to go to the place where the image that we made in the second version of uh, Blender is made, wherever you uh, saved it. So I'm going to click here and then click open okay with uh, our image here I'm gonna left click here I'm gonna right click duplicate the layer I do this just in case something goes wrong I have this duplicate here I'm gonna click this I to hide the duplicate layer I'm gonna click this layer I'm gonna click here I'm gonna uh, click to make a transparent file right here And uh, I'm going to hide the transparent file. I'm going to click here on our main file. I'm going to go to here, which is our color picker. I'm going to click here, which this selects all of our gray color. And then on my keyboard, I'm going to press delete. I'm then going to hold control while holding control, press shift. And while holding control and shift, press A to deselect uh, to make the selection go away, the, the margin ants is what they're called in image editing programs. Okay, now I'm going to click the transparent layer. I'm going to click the eye to turn that back on. I'm going to click right here to make white be the foreground color. I'm going to hover here. I'm going to hold control while holding control. I'm going to press the comma key on my keyboard. So now we have this right here. And now I'm going to click the top layer here. I'm going to go to layer and then select new from visible, then left click here. And basically what happened is all of what we everything that we can see here, even though it's separate layers, was made into one layer here. So with that done, I'm going to click these eyes. Uh, and we can see this layer right here, which is, you know, here. And this is one layer, which is named visible. Okay, so you want to make sure you have this file clicked on. Don't be concerned you don't see layers there. This is what you need right here. You're going to click File, New. You're going to make the width of this new image we're about to make 20, 48 for the width. And then you want the height to be 20, 48. These are the same dimensions of our UV uh, layout images. We're then going to click OK. OK, so we have this new image here. We're going to click here. We're going to click on our layer here. 
we're going to go to edit we're going to click OK now we're going to click on our new image we're going to click edit paste into we're then going to click right here because it's a floating selection so we're going to click here so it's not a floating selection we're going to left click here right click duplicate this hide the this layer right here and then work with this one okay now we're gonna do is uh, with this layer selected we're gonna make sure that for our tool let's make sure we have this say move the active layer for our move tool now we're gonna hold shift then press T this brings up our scale uh, panel and uh, we're just gonna grab and pull we don't really have to be too concerned about uh, our actual dimensions though I think I'm gonna make it like this click scale I'm gonna left click here right click duplicate this layer I'm gonna to go to the move tool I'm gonna to pull this up I'm then gonna to go to layer transform and choose flip vertically Go to the move tool or something like that I'm gonna click this layer I'm gonna click layer new from visible so now I don't have to be concerned about these layers okay, this should Let's see, we have this line right here, so let's duplicate this, take our eraser tool. If you press the bracket keys, you can make your paintbrush or eraser bigger or smaller. You need to click here, I'm going to hide this. Let's put this back here. This uh, Let's make sure that this white background is showing. Basically what I'm doing now, oh, now I'm on there. I want to break up this line right here I don't want there being you know this line uh, obvious line here I don't think it'll I don't think this has to look too nice to work for what we need as far as this part I just don't want there being this definitive uh, you know, line there. Where are you going? What if you're wondering like what is this? And you're like this is he's making a texture. We're actually not making a texture. If you're like oh my gosh that looks awful, he's making a texture. It's not. It's a it's actually a stencil uh, that we're making. That's why I'm not too concerned about. Uh, I'm not too concerned about uh, you know, how this looks here. Uh, though I think I am gonna. Click here. I grabbed the paint, the eyedropper. I clicked here. That allowed me to, to grab the color of these shapes. And I'm gonna take the paintbrush. And kind of, you know. not have a center line there it's basically what I'm doing now but we are planning to use this as a stencil so don't uh, be too concerned okay Okay, now that we have this done, uh, we will use be using this for a stencil as well as uh, to use it to towel uh, textures. When you look here, if you see layers disappear here, I'll try to tell you here. Uh, putting these videos together, the editing process, you know, often these videos take a, a while to put together. So 
this is what you need to be concerned about right here uh, with this selected right here and with our uh, texture set up here what we need to do now is we need to go to colors and then select invert okay the reason why we did this is because when we use this to assist us as we sculpt the lighter colors will basically make geometry come up the darker colors will make geometry go down so that's why we inverted the colors okay so what we want to do now is we're going to click file export as Make sure you know where this is going to, and then just click Export. Okay, uh, you'll see this menu pop up. This is fine with the default settings. Then just click Export again. Okay, now with that done, we can go back to Blender. Okay, here in Blender, we should be ready to go. There is one thing I do want to change, and that's uh, I'm going to click here. I'm going to load up our Speckler map. I had said previously it didn't matter what color for Speckler. Speckler has to be black. Uh, so we have all of our maps set up, and we should be good for all of them with the exception of this one because this needs to be black. Okay, so remember I told you that the images here are separate from Blender. Blender references these images. So probably the easiest way to deal with this as far as changing this black is to go to a folder where we have our specular map, which is right here. I'm going to left click this to make sure it's selected. I'm going to right click here. I'm then going to click open with GIMP. And then here's our specular map here and then we're just going to take the paint bucket color it black I'm then gonna click uh, file export as export replace default keep the default settings here click export and uh, now we're good as far as our specular map so then we're gonna click back here this still is showing up as being gray. However, it's black now. So when we need this, uh, we'll easily be able to pull the black specular map that we need. Okay, hopefully this doesn't confuse you. This is, you know, our specular map was here. In between editing, I uh, just checked to make sure everything was good. To change to our black specular map when we need it, we're just gonna click here. We can click here to see. What we need, then we're going to click Specular Map, and then click Open, and that should be good there. Now with all of our maps set up, I'm going to hover here, left click and drag this to the side, and then uh, roll the mouse wheel back some here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm going to hold Shift and the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to uh, rotate to view some more. I'm going to hold Control in the middle mouse button to zoom in. Hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan. Control in the middle mouse button to zoom in. I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to click here. I'm going to hold shift. Click this area right here. I'm going to press E to extrude. I'm going to right click to get that extrusion to stay in place. I'm just going to pull this out some. I'm just holding the middle mouse button to take a look at this. And I'm we're about to start sculpting. I'm pulling this out just because I wanted to have some. I'm left clicking here holding shift. I wanted uh, just to have some extra definition for muscle. I'm going to press E to extrude. I'm going to right click to get that extrusion to stay in place. I'm now going to push this in some. And basically, if you're like, you know, what is he doing? Uh, 
I'm not trying to get the exact shape. But I'm just setting up for us to... I have kind of like a dragon tricep. I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Okay, I'm going to click here, hold shift. Hold the middle mouse button to just take a look. I'm going to press E to extrude. Pull that out something like that. Click here, hold shift. And press E to extrude. Right click to get that to stay in place. Pull this out something like this. I'm gonna hold shift and click these bottom edges. Press S to scale. Press A to deselect. Held the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm holding shift. I'm pressing S to scale. These bottom edges. I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan. Okay, I'm going to click here to go to face select. I'm going to click here. Hold shift and click here. Here, here. Here, 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 here. I'm going to press E to extrude. I'm going to right click to get that to stay in place. I'm going to press S to scale. Press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here, hold control, then press. out here take a look at this okay, I'm gonna click here go back to edit mode holding shift and the mouse button pan Gonna go, gonna go to face select. Zoom in just to mainly dodge that. I'm gonna press E to extrude. I'm gonna right click to get the extrusion to stay in place. I'm gonna push this out so like this. I'm gonna grab here. Push this over like that. And then I'm gonna press A to deselect. Okay, I'm gonna roll the mouse wheel back. Hold shift and click here. Roll the, mouse, roll the mouse wheel in. I'm gonna I clicked here and then I'm gonna hold control to use Blender's shortest path ability. So I'm holding control. That's how I am skipping, like I'm, I'm uh, selecting in a line. If 
by using that shortest path, holding the middle mouse button to rotate, holding shift, I'll hold control again to use the shortest path again. Now I'm just holding shift. Okay, with all these pieces selected, I'm going to press E to extrude. And then I'm going to right click to get that to stay in place. Okay, so we have this extra geometry to play with. So I'm going to left click here, hold control. Now I am adding extra geometry. So this is changing our UV. However, it doesn't change our seams. I'm going to hold Alt and press S. I'm trying to make the wings be a little bit more there we go stand out a little bit more and when I say wings I mean the the edges of the wings Hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Holding shift in the middle mouse button. To just manipulate, I wanted to make this be like a little bit more like, just trying to give a little bit more definition. We're about to sculpt. Hold the middle mouse button, rotating the view. Now, you know, uh, zoomed out. Not sure if I rolled out the mouse wheel or hold held control. And so now I'm just looking at this, and I am thinking. That's why there's space <laughs> there, uh, as far as my talking. One of the cool things about working with a fantasy creature, while you want to base it on things that are, that are, you know, that, that are like lions and dogs, things like that, you, you can play with the anatomy. You don't want to be too extreme, but, you know, uh, because it's a fantasy type creature that, you know, you, you don't have to be totally on with the anatomy. Though you do want to follow, you know, general guy. I mean, it should, you want to make it look right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pull to the side here. Um, I'm going to click here. See, these are basically just colors here. We just have these set up, ready to go. They kind of help me to think as I work. Uh, I'm going to press A to select our mesh. Now we added geometry in there. So you see this right here? We added geometry. Now, everything here should still work as far as, not this, but when I say everything should work, our seam should work. So we're about to unwrap this again. That's you know simple. We're going to press U, unwrap. However, what you see here is the old UV. When I say old UV, what I mean is before I added in the, these extra extrusions in, this was the UV. Because I added extra extrusions in, the UV has now changed. However, that's not that big of a deal because to make a new UV, just with everything selected, we can press U, 
this brings up our UV mapping menu and then we can select unwrap and now we have our new UV map now this it's kind of interesting here however I believe for the most part everything should it should still work relatively well okay Ugh, sometimes you got to tell yourself you're doing a tutorial uh, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna left click here I'm gonna pull this to the side some we're gonna zoom back I'm gonna press a to deselect We're going to click here, then go to object mode. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going, with this selected, we're on this layer right here. We're going to hold shift, and then while holding shift, we're going to press D. So we duplicated our mesh right here. So I'm going to right click to get that mesh to stay in place. I'm going to press M to bring up our move to layer. I'm then going to click here to put a duplicate of this mesh right here so we have this duplicate to go back to if that's what we want to do okay the reason why I'm saying we have this duplicate here so we can go back to is we're about to make some major changes to our mesh as far as work we're about to do so currently we're selected on this duplicate we want to reselect right here so that we're selected on you know what we're looking at here what we're going to do now is click this eye to turn off our subdivision surface modifier okay now what we're going to do is we're going to add a new modifier to this and what we're going to do is click here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the multi resolution modifier so we're going to left click here to put this on our mesh Okay, the multi-resolution modifier is kind of similar to the uh, subdivision surface modifier. However, with a subdivision surface modifier, we get detail by you know clicking here to make the detail go up. With the multi-resolution modifier, we go to where we see this says subdivide. So we're going to left click here, and we're going to click keep clicking this. Now, as we click this, our you can see our, our model looks more and more detailed. Be aware that as I keep clicking this, I'm increasing our polygon. So depending on your the power of your computer, be careful uh, how far you take this up. Currently, I have this at four. You can see uh, the increases up here. Like this is uh, an important number to look at. This triangles here. So we're at you know over a million uh, triangles right now however with this high detail this will allow us to scope and pretty much what do what we want to do with this dragon as far as adding a lot of extra detail in now as we go into this next step of work I just wanna you know give you uh, uh, some possible workarounds depending on the power of your computer if you have a decent fairly decent computer when I say decent uh, I mean it's about five years old around five years old I'm assuming you probably could go up to about four subdivisions you might want to keep your subdivisions around here uh, or if you have a computer that's older than that you might want to skip this part right here as far as the sculpting because we still ha do have our other you know a dragon that will take the uh, the different uh, maps onto it. This computer, just so you know what I'm working with, I have a uh, computer that has a GTX 1070 graphics card. I also have 32 gigs of RAM in this computer. So uh, some of the things that you might see, you, you know, the, the, the graphics card and the RAM are gonna help a lot with, you know, what you're watching here. Typically there's there's a way to do different things like one of the things that you might be able to do is uh, take this mesh and uh, separate it and basically sculpt on uh, 
one leg or the head or the wings at a time. So um, I, I just wanted to, to uh, give you some information as far as working on you know your computers. I just got this computer, praise God, uh, not too long ago, and it allows me to do things easier. The other computer I was working on uh, had 8 gigs of RAM with uh, two, 2 gigs of RAM in my graphics card and I you know probably would have had to do a lot of the work a lot of work arounds that I'm talking about now to you so anyway let's move on okay I'm going to click subdivide one more time this took us up to over 5 million triangles Okay, what we're going to do now with our mesh selected on is I'm going to click here and then I'm going to click sculpt mode. Okay, here in sculpt mode, I'm going to click the tool panel here. Sculpt mode allows us to put in a lot of fine details in. I'm going to hold them in the mouse button, rotate the view. Typically in sculpt mode, the tools that I tend to use a lot are the inflate brush, the smooth brush, the crease tool, as well as the clay strips tool here. If I need to grab something and move it, I'll tend to use the uh, snake hook brush. Sometimes I'll use the get, the grab brush. We'll be, it's, uh, you're probably like, oh, that's almost all the, the, the tools up there. Uh, we'll probably be using a, a lot of the clay strips, the crease, will probably be the main uh, tools that we use here. So let's click on the clay strips tool now. Okay, the clay strips brush is nice because it allows you to, you know, have kind of like this look. It's a very organic look. One thing that's nice with working with the multi-resolution modifier, we can actually click and go down. So we can kind of go down and up. So for doing our main shape work here I'm gonna go down some and then we can start adding in uh, a lot of the main bodies for when I say bodies the main uh, mass for our mesh here when you have a tool as you're working in a uh, scope mode, when you hold shift, you automatically turn on the smooth tool. It's very useful. As far as the strength of your brush right here, when you take pull this up, your brush strength will get you know stronger. When you push it back, it'll get weaker. When you press F and then pull with your mouse, you'll make your brush size increase. When you push the other way, your brush size will decrease. So what I'm doing right now is I'm giving a I'm taking away the, the smooth look basically by of the dragon by uh, taking the clay and just going over the smooth areas of the dragon. Sometimes my screen capture buttons will uh, interfere uh, or maybe not the button screen capture software will interfere with me being able to change uh, the settings there. Let me click here and enter in point two. Enter to lock that in. Point two is not strong enough. Try point four. Press enter to lock that in. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically uh, my thoughts now are take away the general smoothness of the mesh with the clay strips tool. Holding shift the middle mouse button to pan. I'm 
I'm going to press F, push this in to make this smaller. When you work with the uh, multi-resolution tool, oh, by the way, if you're wondering why our mesh is only showing half, uh, scope mode does that. When you come back, come out of scope mode, your mirror modifier will be on, and you know will look like it how it is normally. Okay, for this wings, I'm gonna press F, shrink the uh, the brush, and kind of do. I kind of want these uh, streaks through the wings like this. Hold the mouse button, zoom back. When you work in scope mode, a lot of times you want to think, you know, you build stuff up and then you can smooth it out. So I'll hold shift and you can see over there the smooth tool. And now I'm, I don't want to totally smooth it out because that's why I'm using the clay strips. But you can, you know, work to have a, you know, to have like this not smooth look there. What I'm thinking now is like right around this uh, edge of the mouth. I kind of want to have it raised up. Hold and shift them in the mouse button to pan the view. Yeah, a lot of this I'm I'm just roughing up. I'm at some things I'm adding to, other things I'm kinda I'm just roughing up the smoothness. These horns here. I'm gonna hold them in the mouse button to rotate the view. I'm gonna be careful about that center line because we do have a merit modifier on here. Reason why I put the shapes on here like this was more so that I could come in here and uh, Add detail to this. However, with the the mesh that we duplicated, we can put a normal map on there, and uh, we want to have some of the bigger shapes that come out from the body. We want to, you know, have them actually those shapes actually come out from the body. Okay, I'm going to take click here to take this preview up to four. And basically, as I go up, you'll see that the brush has more influence. Some of the things here, some of the detail, I'll hold shift to smooth out some. So here, I'm going to take this up to 0.7 for these wings. Doesn't look too smooth to me. Now I'll press F to scale, Just press down. Something cool you can do in scope mode is you can, uh, you're going to press F, increase the uh, area of influence. This crease tool allows you to make edges sharper. Like here on the wings, you just kind of aim for where you want the crease at. It's very useful, for particularly for shaping things like muscle, as well as 
the wings here. It's like I want to put kind of like a hamstring muscle here. So I'm going to go to the clay strips. And what I'll do is I'll build up kind of like the hamstring muscles here. And I'm putting a, kind of like a mound of muscle here, a mound of muscle here. I'll use the crease to separate that. Same thing with uh, the calf, good old gastrocnemesis. I thought that was like a very cool named muscle. Gastrocnemesis. That's how I remember it being pronounced. Same thing here. We can kind of like build up some kind of like a, like a almost like a quadricep look to the legs here. See, so yeah, I build up like think of this as like a mound right here, a mound right here, right? Then I click here, go to the crease tool. And then I go in between the two mounds. See that? How it starts defining the shape. Pretty cool. Let's hold the middle mouse button to rotate. Okay, so we generally want to. Oops. Use our crease tool to define in between muscles as muscles as well as the uh, edges of muscles. It does a very nice job. Our clay strip. We want it to rough up our image. I'm holding the middle mouse button as well as the. Uh, Shift button to pan, so we'll just rough this up. Rough up the nail some. Okay, I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. Once you have that general roughness, as well as your crease tool to define your muscles, this form area. Crease tool and define this shoulder area more. What I'm thinking here is I'm thinking of like a, a deltoid with three heads. However, I'm playing with the uh, anatomy. So I'm putting it in my mind, but not, you know, strictly following that. Just hold the middle mouse button, rotate the view. And once we have our general you know, roughing up here, just kind 
not smooth here. You want to be careful about that center line. And I'll hold shift to smooth some of that out. Yep, center line. Huh? It's a little too smooth. I'm gonna press oops F. I kinda like that sharp point there. gets too rough we can hold shift and uh, smooth it out okay, I'm gonna roll the mouse button to zoom in and then hold shift in the mouse button to pan roll the mouse button to zoom in I'm gonna click here go to the crease brush Define this. I want it to be like kind of like that membrane you see when a creature, particularly most of the time reptile creatures, opens up, open, not opens, open their mouths wide. So I want this pretty well defined. Holding shift to smooth that out some. Okay, I'm going to roll the mouse button to zoom back some. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. And I click here and press 1, then press enter to lock that in. Okay, I'm going to roll the mouse button to zoom in. I'm going to hold shift and the mouse button to pan. What we want here is a. Now I know what I said about the center line. Kind of armor plating. Holding the middle mouse button. I'm holding the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Holding shift and the middle mouse button to pan. Something that's very cool in Blender. See how the legs are kind of getting in my way? This is pretty decent. Holding the mouse button to rotate the view. I can hover the mouse here, hold Alt, and then while holding Alt, press B. Press Alt, B, is it not? It is Alt B, computer screen capture, and yeah, other things like screen keys showing up. I guess we're interfering, so I'm gonna hold Alt, press B. And I'm gonna draw a box right here, and when I let go, it looks like you know there's a window here. However, this is a 3D window, so basically what it does is only what, you can only see what you drew the box over, which is spectacular. We're doing work like this. But we want to put this uh, armor on the chest. I'm 
pretty much, you know, running down. And press F to shrink my brush size. Just re going over this, making it thicker. Okay, I'm gonna take a look. Now with that, you know, put in, we can go back with our crease tool and uh, refine that area in between more. When I say in between, I mean in between our, you know, kind of little clay extrusion things that we made. To get out of this mode, you hold Alt, press B outside your window, and now everything is back. Okay, I'm going to click here, go to the clay strips brush. I'm building up like a bicep muscle here. And I can click here, go to the crease brush and define that zone. Click here, go back to the clay strips brush. I'm going to press F to increase my brush. I'm going to hold shift. As a matter of fact, I'm going to press F to shrink this. Kind of want to do this is kind of make so this kind of looks like separated bone. Go to the crease brush. Pretty fun, the uh, scope and stuff. Okay, what we want to do now is start putting our scales on. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to click here. Let's go to our draw brush. See where it says texture here? What we want to do here is go right from our sculpting. So we're in sculpt mode, right? We go right over to texture. Because we're going right from sculpting right to texture, Blender knows that we want to use a texture for a brush. So we're going to click new. Now we're going to search for our brush. So here's the folder. You can click here to see what we have. This is the uh, what we worked on in GIMP. We're going to click here, then click Open Image. Okay, so first, when you first uh, have this texture come in, you'll be in your brush mapping that says View Plane. And when I press F to scale my brush up, you can see that wherever we click, 
we put uh, that texture, which is very nice. Very quick, nice way to do detail. It's working, ten, tends to be working well here. You can click here and change this to tiled. Sometimes you'll get decent results with that. You can also click here and then go to stencil. This pops up. If you hold the right mouse button, you'll move the stencil. When you hold shift as well as the right mouse button. Oh, look at that. I didn't know that you could scale it, but you can you can scale uh, holding shift as well as the right mouse button. And then basically you position this the stencil. Yeah, I didn't realize before you could make it go horizontal and then now I'm still holding a shift in the right mouse button. With this you uh, use the stencil and paint to try to get the detail that you want. So you just move it. And this is another way where you can you know get a decent amount of precision because you put this exactly where you want. You can zoom in. I'm going to click here and take our multi resolution modifier up to five. Take my strength up to one. And hold the right mouse button to move it here. Zoom in, hold shift the middle mouse button to pan. Okay, I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. You can take a look. Pretty cool. I'm going to click here, go to. I'm going to go to view plane. I'm going to zoom in by rolling the mouse wheel. I'm going to hold shift in the mouse button to pan. I'm going to take this down, strength down. Middle mouse button to zoom in. Press F scale to scale this up some. Okay, I'm going to click back to stencil. You should be aware that you can rotate the stencil as well. I think that is hold control. Yes, control in the right mouse button. So if your pattern, you want to have it be different, you can rotate the pattern up, hold the uh, right mouse button to move it. I'll zoom in. I'll hold shift in the middle mouse button to move our dragon, and then I'll Click to put this uh, pattern here. Roll back. So yeah, holding control as well as the right mouse button allows you to rotate your stencil. Now I'm just taking a look at this. I'm gonna click here, change this back to view plane. Zoom in.
I'm generally just looking for smooth areas. And then uh, using the texture to put scales there. Hold and shift in the middle mouse button pan. Just rolling the mouse wheel to zoom in. Holding shift in the middle mouse button to pan. Holding the middle mouse button to rotate. If you click somewhere, what you that you didn't want to, you can uh, hold Shift, press F, shrink your area of influence. You can hold Shift, and even with the texture on, you'll still go to smooth, and you can smooth out your different areas. Then, as soon as you let go of Shift, you'll right back, press F. You can continue working. Shift the middle mouse button to pan. I am just looking for smooth areas. I'm going to roll the middle mouse button to zoom back. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click here and then go to object mode. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button so we can take a look and uh, it looks very cool, I think. Okay, so with our mesh selected here, we're going to hold shift and press D to duplicate. So there's our duplicate. I'm going to right click. I'm then going to press M to bring up our move to layer. I'm then going to click here to move the duplicate to that layer. I'm now going to hover here and then pull to the side here like this. Okay, so if you just want to steal image, you could stop here and I think have a very cool, you know, image as well as a, you know, very cool uh, 3D mesh. I tend to like to animate things. So right now, I think this looks very good. I'm going to left click on it. When I left clicked on it, you know, my computer is, uh, you know, it's working to, to keep up with all these uh Polygons, if you look right here, you can see that this is over 5 million triangles. So basically what we have right now is we have this mesh with our over 5 million triangles. We have a duplicate of that mesh and then we have another mesh that doesn't have any sculpting on it. I'm going to click here. And when I say here, I'm clicking to go to this layer. This is our duplicate mesh here. Where this uh, preview says five, I'm going to left click and take this down to three. Now at three, see how all of the, for the most part, the extrusions are there. Now when I take this to two, actually, you'll see right here, this disappears at two. At three, we have most of our detail other than our scales. And at three, we have 
300,000 polygons, which still is a decent amount, but it's a lot better than, it's a lot better than, uh, 5 million, right? Let me make sure I know. So, we have this mesh called Cylinder 2. Let's name this Dragon 2. So that we know that this is a mesh that has less detail on it. Let's click here. Click on our main dragon. Let's name this dragon and then press enter. So we know this is our detailed dragon. Okay, with this detailed dragon, we can do some pretty cool things. We can take this dragon that's over 5 million polygons. We can make a normal map from this. Put that normal map on our other dragon that is 300,000 polygons. And uh, I think it pretty much looks the same. So let me show you how to do that now. Uh, the advantage of having that 300,000 polygon dragon that's still not ideal for animation. However, it will cut down a lot of the workload on our computer as we, uh, you know, continue to work on this dragon. Or maybe I should say this on this dragon character. Okay, to try to be clear, we're going to take the detail of all of these scales, maybe not all of them, hmm. most of these uh, scales from this dragon and put that detail on our dragon too. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a normal map. So to do that, let's press uh, A to deselect. A to deselect. Uh, now we're going to go to our render tab. We're going to scroll down to where we see bake. We're going to click this arrow right here, right? So now here's our bake setup. We're going to click here. We're going to select normal map. We're going to click open. So this is where our normal map is going to be baked. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift. And then while holding shift, we're going to click this layer right here. This is our dragon. Where is This layer is where our dragon two layer is at. So now I'm letting go of shift. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to scroll down, see where we see this says bake mode. We want to click here and then change this to normals. We then want to make sure we have a check mark next to selected to active. You can only see selected, it looks like selected to A, that should be selected to active. So you want to check mark there. You want to make sure that you first select the detail dragon and then second select the low detail dragon. The order is important, so I'm going to left click here I'm then going to hold shift and then while holding shift I'm going to left click the uh, less detailed dragon okay so with that done we're just going to click bake and then we can see an indicator up here showing us you know how the bake is going this is going to take a while so I'm going to pause the video and then come back when it's done Okay, that took about 25 minutes to render. Uh, there were some issues as far as, uh, for whatever reason, trying to bake this normal map to our Dragon 2. So, long story short, this, let me click just this. This is uh, the first duplicate we made. So, this is our very low poly mesh. So, I baked the normal from... Our main dragon mesh to instead of dragon two to our extremely low uh, poly mesh which is currently named cylinder dot zero zero one so let me click here so you can see it here okay let me click on the layer so here's our dragon right here this is what a normal map looks like the normal map basically, instead of just being the texture, the normal map allows computers to see the height information instead of just the visual part of the information. So long story short, with a normal map, uh, 
the normal map allows you to not totally see, but for the most part, actually rotate a mesh and have that mesh have depth that it didn't have before. The depth of the textures that you see are coming from the original mesh that the normal map came from. So here's our normal map here. You can see that little symbol right there. So we need to save this. So we're going to click image, save as image. Then we'll click normal map and then click save as image. Okay, now that we have the normal map and we have the normal map saved, now we need an ambient occlusion from this uh, high detailed mesh. So we're going to click on our mesh. We're going to click here. And then we're going to click AO, which stands for ambient occlusion. We're going to open this up. Where we see the bake mode right here, where it says uh, normals. What we're going to do is with, let's first unclick this selected to active because we don't need to have another mesh uh, directly have you know this ambient occlusion go to another mesh. So what we're going to do is where it says bake mode normals, we're going to click here and then we're going to click ambient occlusion. So with that set up, now we can get the ambient occlusion from this mesh. Okay, so I'm going to put a check mark here next to normalize for ambient occlusion. I'm then going to click make. Then I'll pause the video and come back once the ambient occlusion is finished. Okay, here's our ambient occlusion map. So we want to click image, save as image, then I'll just click AO and then click save as image. Okay, so with our ambient occlusion map there, we took our normal and we went from this main dragon mesh to our lowest dragon mesh however we should be able to click here make sure we're selected on our actual uh, lower dragon mesh we should be able to put the normal map on here even though it was made for the lower dragon mesh and have this still get most of the detail from this mesh So make sure you're clicked on here. Here being, you know, your lower detailed dragon mesh. Okay, and with this mesh clicked on, we want to go to material. We want to click new. We then want to go to textures. We then want to click new. We then want to click open. And then select our normal map and then click open to open that image up in the blender. We then want to scroll down, look for where we see influence. We want to take away this chart check mark next to color so that the normal maps color doesn't appear on our mesh because we want the uh, geometry from the normal map, not the color from it. Okay, then we want to put a check mark here for geometry. So we don't see any change yet. We need to go to the material tab. Or we need to go to set, go from solid, which we see, not tab. Go from the solid view, which we see, to the material view. So we're going to click here. This is the view we're in, which is the solid view. We need to go to the material view. We don't have any lights set up here. So I'm going to right click here, hold shift A. This brings up our add to menu. I'm then going to select lamp. I'm going to select Sun. I'm then going to right click here, hold Shift, then press A. I'm then going to grab an empty. I'll select the cube empty. I'm then going to click on the light, hold Shift, and then while holding Shift, 
click on the empty. I'm then going to hold control, then press T. This brings up our make track menu. I'm then going to select track two constraint. So now I'm going to click on the light. The light's going to aim at that empty. And I'll aim the light here. And now you can see a lot of the detail from our dragon meshes here. And I'll right click here. I'll hold shift, press A. I'll go to lamp. I'll bring in a point lamp. I'm going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate the view. I'll click on the lamp settings. I'll take this the energy up more for this. I'll hold shift while pressing D to duplicate this just to put some more lights around. Okay, when we're clicked on our mesh as well, I'm going to hover here. I'm going to go to our texture tab. See our normal setting here? We can actually increase the uh, the normal as well. So when we look here, I'm going to hold shift and then, well, I'm not going to hold shift. I'm going to click here. Here is our This is our uh, our main dragon mesh with that, that has the most detail on it. Okay, when you look here, it looks like this right now because we're in the material viewing node for this as well. Let's see if it will let me. Okay, there's a lot more detail here. However, look at the polygon count over uh, 5 million triangles. So when we click here, let me change back to the material. You can see we still have a lot of that detail. Well, only, only, I can say only because we're talking about 5 million polygons. This is, you know, over, this is, uh, over 300,000. However, it is, you know, a fraction of the other polygon co uh, cost. And you can see that as we rotate, it looks like that, uh, that geometry is actually on here. Let me click on a texture tab. decent around there so the lower you take this down you can you know lower the geometry how it shows or you can make it you know uh, appear like it's coming out more by adjusting this right here okay so since this is easier to work with we're gonna work with this mesh now I'm gonna click on this mesh here And then with this uh, clicked on, I'm going to press M. And then I'm going to move this mesh over here. So now I'm going to click on our main mesh. And I'm going to press M and then move this to the first level here. I'm going to zoom back, press A, then press M. And then move them to the first layer as well. Okay, I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. I'm going to press A to D select. I'm going to click here, hold shift, click here, here, as well as here. I'm going to press M to move these lights to their own layer. So I'm going to move them here. And then I'm going to click here. I'm now going to hold shift and then click here with our lights and I wanted to show you like here's our very low poly dragon right here what I wanted to show you was even with this low poly dragon because we have that normal map we're gonna click here we're gonna scroll up 
Well, actually, let's go to our material tab, click new. We're going to go to texture. We're going to click new. We're going to click open. We're going to go to textures. We're going to click here. We're going to click that same normal app, normal map image. And we can see here is the colors. We don't want that. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to take away the check mark for color. We're going to put a check mark next to geometry. And look at this. a lot of the detail uh, a lot of the detail look how smooth this moves yet it has that geometry most of you know a lot of the geometry from uh, our original detailed mesh so I just wanted to show you when you have that normal map you know this is 84,000 triangles you can actually click here take this down so this is 21,000 triangles and look at it and that's because of the normal map. So I would like to uh, do a tutorial on rigging this and animating this. And most likely this would be the uh, mesh that we would rig and animate. So with that being said, we're going to click back here. We're going to hold shift. And then while holding shift, I'm going to click on our light layer. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to texture paint this. So to do that, we're going to click on it. So now it's selected. You can see the orange outline around it, letting you know that it's selected. We're then going to click here. We're then going to click texture map. Okay, when you look at this slots menu right here, see where it says normal map there? And there's our normal map. And then you look here where it says uh, texture you can see uh, here's the same texture. So there's a correlation between here as well as here. So what we want to do is add a base coat in to, to be the base of our dragon right here. So we're going to click here. Once we click here, we're going to click new. Then we're going to go down to where we see this open folder. We're going to click here. We're going to go to our textures folder. We're going to click here so we see our options. Then we're going to click our base color. Then we're going to click open image to bring in the base color. Now you can see the base color for our dragon is this red color that we made near the beginning of this tutorial. Okay, you can see the base coat is on the dragon. So right here you can see the normal map. Uh, to deal with that, we just have to click here. We'll click here so we can see our actual maps. Then we'll click the base color from here. So now we can see the base color there. So the, the nice thing with this base coat is we have most of the color on our dragon. So we're just going to paint over this. So what we want to do is go to this tools tab right here. We can pick our different colors from here. As far as the size of this brush, if I press F, I can push in. The brush will shrink. If I press F, I can pull out. The brush will grow. So uh, the first color I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to this yellowish color here. I'm going to hover here and then pull this out. If you look here, you can see this is the current strength of the brush. We can either have this brush be 100% or currently it's set for 0 0.7. So what I'm going to do is hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm then going to press F to scale. And... Uh, when I just clicked here, I saw some of the geometry moves. So I'm going to press Control Z. I'm going to click to our slots tab here. And the reason why when I went to paint, some geometry moved was because currently we're selected on our normal map slot. We want to make sure we're selected on our base color slot right here. So with that done, I'm going to go back to Tools. I'm going to press F to shrink the brush some more. And now you can see that I'm painting on our actual base coat. And then as I color, you can see the, the color appearing over here on our actual base UV map. Okay, so I did a little bit more coloring in between cuts. but We're going to uh, continue coloring on here. So what we can do is just get in our base colors. So I'm just holding the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm holding shift in the middle mouse button to pan the view. 
you can choose to have your lights differently. I have to tell myself that I'm doing a tutorial here. So, uh, you know, the lights are, are fine for me. I'll, what I'm doing now is I just lowered down the strength of the brush so I could blend in this more right here. Now I'm going to go to an oranges color and I'm just going to pick different areas just to give some you know, variation in this uh, in this base base color. I'm going to try to not to spend uh, too much time on this. Right here, I want this to be a gray color, so I'm going to click here, click here. I'm going to increase the strength here. So I can zoom in to get a little bit more detail here. Like that. For this right here. For coloring these, these horns, what we should be able to do is click here, hover here, and then press L. And what this should let us do, just holding the middle mouse button to rotate the view, is only be able to color on what we selected on. So I'm going to go for this, I'm going to pick a grayish color. And you can see that I can just quickly color this in. For these, I want a yellowish color. So I'm going to go here, raise this up. And uh, this is nice because you can you know, color without having to be too concerned about uh, coloring something else in unintentionally. I'm going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate the view. Hold and shift in the mouse button to rotate the view. Okay, when we want to color outside of uh, the different areas we selected by pressing L, we can just click this to turn that off. So I want to color these wings here. Holding the mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to lower down the strength. I right click, that's why the strength jumped back. Just to blend this in some more. I'm going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to go to a gray color here. I'll take the strength up. I'm just putting these at an angle where I can paint without uh, being too concerned about getting the paint on something I don't want the paint to be on. Okay, I'm going to hold shift and minimize button to pan. 
trying to aim the claw so that yeah I can paint without like before being too concerned about uh getting the paint on something else. Holding your middle mouse button to rotate the view. Okay, I'm holding shift the middle mouse button to paint the view. I did a little bit more painting in between the uh, edits. Not a lot. I'm just, you know, kind of using this orange color to not quite add in highlights. Just give some variation in the colors. Holding them in the mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to paint these horns here. It's a gray color. Take my strength up. Remember as you paint that if you don't click here and then click save image that when you close this file and open it up most likely your the work that you've done for your painting will be gone so make sure you save your texture image your blender file is one save your texture file is another save Mouse button to rotate the view. I'm holding shift and middle mouse button to pan. And uh, your results, you know, the more time you put in, the better results you'll get. I am doing a tutorial, so I'm trying to, you know, get a decent look while I'm trying to remember. I'm not, I'm not going to say not taking time because I can imagine this tutorial is very. Is considerable in length now. See this? I really don't want that there, so I can just I can actually press S and then select a color by pressing S with the eyedropper and then. You know, be able to paint if I click here there we go if I can press S and if you look here you see this uh, little color 
the square pop up and then you can you know, click there and use that to color I'm just taking a look at this Here we go again. When I say here we go again, I'm talking about my screen capture software. Sometimes uh, that and uh, sometimes it'll cause issues where it won't let me uh, adjust dolls and sliders. Okay, once we have a decent amount of work done here, what we can do is make sure you have your image saved. So we'll click Save Image. Okay, remember that ambient occlusion file we made? What we're going to do now is we're going to go to our folder. We're going to look for where our, folder, where our, our files are at. So here's the, the base paint that we were you know, just painting. So we're going to right click here, select open with GIMP. There's GIMP opening up. We go back to that same folder, click here in our ambient occlusion, right click here, and then click open with GIMP. Then we'll click to go into GIMP. Okay, so here's our ambient occlusion map. When we click here, here's our base map. What we want to do is click on this ambient occlusion tile, click on the layer, click edit, then click copy click on our base texture click edit paste into this paste our ambient occlusion map into the same uh, tab as our base map so then this ambient occlusion map comes in it says floating selection pasted layer we want to click right here which is a uh, create new layer button that makes it so this is no longer a floating layer Yeah, floating layer, floating selection. So now with this here, we want to click here. See where this says normal. We want to change this normal. This is a blending mode. We want to change that normal to multiply. So now we can see here's our ambient occlusion basically blended on top of our base mesh. I'm going to click here. I'm then going to go to layer and then select new from visible. So now we have the ambient occlusion as well as the base mesh, not mesh, mm, ambient occlusion as well as the base map as one visible layer right here. Okay, what we can do now with this uh, visible layer, which is a combination of both of these two layers here, is with this visible layer selected, we can go to colors, then we can go to curves we can click to put a movement, you know, color adjustment dot right here. Push this up. This will take our colors brighter. We'll put another dot here. Pull down some, which will make our colors, our, our darks a little bit darker. So this makes our brights a little bit brighter. This makes our darks a little bit darker. We're then going to click OK. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, with this together, I'm going to click File export as this is our base mesh this is going to stay our base mesh our base map I should say it's the, the the M that's getting me 
it's a base map all right so we're gonna click export we're gonna click replace these default settings here are fine we're gonna click export again so now that's being exported out okay with that exported map out now what we can do is go back to blender okay so here in blender we're gonna click on our texture here which is our base mesh texture we're then gonna click this button to uh, go to our texture file here's our you know edited base mesh texture that we just uh, base map texture that we just uh, exported out of GIMP I'm gonna left click here and then click open image so now we can see our dragon with uh, the ambient occlusion as well as the painting that we did to it okay when we look at our dragon now we can see it has specularity over the entire dragon it'd be nice if we can control the specularity we can control the specularity and I'm going to show you how to do that now okay so what we're going to do is we're going to click here we're then going to click new we're then going to go here go to our textures folder click here so we can see our textures click specular and then click open image okay what we want to do now is we want to go to our slots panel here we want to click on specular map so that we when we set the to paint the specularity on that we're painting on the specularity map and not any other maps that we don't want to want to be painting on okay now what we're gonna do is come down in our texture panel over here and see this influence where it has this influence see where it says this uh, check mark here this check mark here is uh, to have the influence influence a color so we do not want the check mark here next to that color so what we're gonna do is click here to take away that check mark and then see where it says speckler here we're gonna put check marks next to all three of what these options underneath specular okay so when we go to our tools panel wherever we paint white will paint specularity so I'm gonna press F so when I start to paint here this is going to be affected this being the specularity by how white the color is as well as the strength here so I'll turn the strength all the way up to one and now you can see when I paint there that specularity coming in so let's paint that wings here that. okay so I'll turn the strength down some press F to scale We can control the. Should be able to control the specularity by the uh, color as well here. So we can get like a general specularity. Yes, that's very cool. Over everything without having a full specularity. Make sure as you're doing this that as you work you click image, save image, otherwise you'll lose your work. So set this up. It's very cool. Shift the middle mouse button to pan.
Press F to increase the area of influence. So really the color is the main thing you're using to control the strength of it. Eh, both. You guys let me know what do you what do you think as far as uh as you work with this. Just quickly, you know, trying to go through here. I think it helps to have uh, a mixture of the, uh, you know where things are, you know, where the whole thing isn't just one specularity. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to click here. We're going to go to object mode with our dragon mesh selected. We're going to press H to temporarily hide it. I'm going to hover my mouse here, I'm going to hold shift, and then while holding shift, I'm going to press B. I'm then going to draw a zoom box to zoom in here. You can hopefully use the techniques you learn to uh, color the eyes. As far as using textures, if you want, I'm going to use uh, materials to color the eyes for the sake of time. If you're like, for the sake of what time, uh, just for trying, I just want to get this uh, tutorial done and get it up. I've actually been working on this. Uh, for a while so uh, we're almost to the end of it so I'm gonna click on this eye right here and then I'm gonna click here and then click here to go to edit mode okay so I'm gonna hover my mouse here I'm gonna hold shift and while holding shift I'm gonna press B to uh, zoom in right here I'm gonna click here because we have this uh, seam right here as well as the seam right here we can hold here press L and all of this area in between the two seams is selected. Okay, so with this selected, I'm going to go to the materials tab. I'm going to click new. This right here is basically this color here. So we want to click this plus here to make yet another material. So we'll click that. Then we'll click new again. Okay, what we're going to do now is click here to go to Diffuse. We're going to pick a yellow color. I'm then going to click Assign. I'm then going to press A to Deselect. I'm then going to click here, then go to Object Mode. Okay, now I'm going to hold Control. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to zoom back. I'm going to hold Shift and middle mouse button to Pan. Okay, now I'm going to click here. I'm going to click here, then I'm going to select Edit Mode. I'm going to hover here. We have face select on. I'm going to hover here, press L, and then going to hover here, then press L again to select both of these two pieces of mesh. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click New. This is going to be the color. This color right here is the color that you see on our teeth. This is also the current color for this. So we can leave this so, you know, it's pretty close to the color of our teeth so now what we're going to do is click this plus button to the right here we'll then click new so now with this material we can change this to whatever color we want okay we have this area selected I'm going to hold the middle mouse button we have this area here as well so I'm going to hover here I'm going to then press L I'm going to press L again sometimes if you hover if you're hovering over an edge instead of a face you'll you know, miss getting the selection. I'm now going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the mouse back towards the front. Okay, so with all of this uh, piece of mesh selected, including the back as well as here, including the back here, I'm now going to go to diffuse. I'm going to go down. I'm going to pick 
a reddish color for the gums. And then with that selected here, I'm then going to hover right here over a sign and then left click and click assign. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is click here and then go to object mode. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to hold alt and while holding alt, I'm going to press the H key to unhide the rest of our mesh. Okay, now I'm going to go to the navigation tab. I'm then going to click front. We're in front ortho, which is front orthographic mode, which is where we want to be. We have a UV map as well as a color on this eye. We don't have it on this eye, so we're going to click on this eye. We're then going to press X to bring up our delete menu, then choose delete. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to hold shift. While holding shift, we're going to press C. We're going to hold shift and the mouse button to pan. We did, we pressed shift C so we could put the 3D cursor right there. I'm now going to hold shift and then while holding shift, press B to draw a zoom box. I'm going to hold shift and the mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold control and the middle mouse button to zoom in. I'm going to hold shift and the mouse button to pan again. Okay. What we're going to do now is select this eye. We're then going to go to our pivot point, which is here. Blender's default pivot point is the medium point. We want to change this to the 3D cursor. With the eye selected, we want to hold shift and then while holding shift, press D. Pull to the side just so I know I duplicated this eye. I'm then going to right click to get that eye to jump right back into place. With that duplicate selected, I'm going to press S to scale and X axis, negative one. And then I'm going to press enter to lock that in. Okay, now I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, we don't need this UV image editor window anymore, so I'm going to hover over this triangular looking stripe thing. I'm going to left click and drag and pull to the side and then let go. Now we have a full window again. Okay, now I'm going to Roll my mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. Okay, hopefully you learned a lot about uh, texture painting, about you know the different techniques that we put this uh, put to to use in making this dragon. Uh, the more time you spend, you'll you know get better results. Uh, if you made it this far, far in the tutorial, you've reached the end. Congratulations for making it all the way through. And uh, I like how uh, this turned out. You know, uh, and I am looking forward to hopefully making a rigging tutorial for this in the future. Uh, you guys let me know if that's something you would like to see. Uh, I'm planning to do it, but sometimes things come up. If you definitely tell me you would like to see that. I will try harder to make sure that I work towards doing a rigging tutorial for this. Okay guys, that's it for the tutorial. For all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel and we share them, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And to those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel and you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.